Hey, it's Dougie Wood, and in this video, I'm going to walk you through the costs involved with SharePoint Online. Now, all of this information is obviously publicly accessible from the Microsoft.com website, but sometimes it can be a bit overwhelming and confusing. So I wanted to try and boil it down for you and give you some of the key information that you need to know. Now, I'm going to be showing you this in British pounds, but the price is going to be very similar um, in US dollars. Nothing's massively different. It's just um, how it sort of translates the, the cost and conversions. Um, now, there's three main packages, really, I suppose, that you'd need to be aware of um, relating to SharePoint. Um, the most basic option is Microsoft 365 Business Basic. Um, and this is what's going to be the entry level into getting you SharePoint. Now, you can see with this license here, if I go further down, you can see all the different applications which are included as part of the Microsoft 365 Business Basic license. So um, at the moment, there is Teams, but I think, to be honest, Microsoft are looking at kind of splitting that out, and that might no longer be included in that license. It might be a slightly different license. Um, but what it will always include is OneDrive, so your basic kind of storage uh, for personal use. Um, then you've got SharePoint, which is uh, obviously SharePoint Online, that comes to intranet, things like that, uh, and Exchange, which is your emails. Um, now, the core fundamental thing to understand about this license is that if you're using SharePoint um, and OneDrive to store documents, this license only covers you for the web and mobile apps of Word, Excel, PowerPoint, and Outlook. So you can't have desktop versions of them. So some of the key things to understand. So first, identity, access and user management for up to 300 employees. Now, that's not saying that you can't have, say for example, you've got 301 um, employees. That's not saying that, that you can't use this license. It means you can only license 300 employees with that license. And then your 301 employee has to have an enterprise level um, license. So enterprise level licenses are very similar to this, but obviously they incur additional costs. Um, you can have a custom business email, so you can have your own uh, business domain. You've got the access to Outlook, uh, Word, Excel, PowerPoint, and, and the sort of office suites, but only via the web um, and mobile apps. You can't have them on the desktop app. Chat call and video conferences, Microsoft Teams, but as I say, take that with a pinch of salt. Depending on when you're watching this recording of this video, this may have changed and you might need to double check that. Um, one terabyte of cloud storage per employee. Now, this is where people get a bit confused and unstuck because what that's talking about there is OneDrive storage space. One terabyte of cloud storage space per employee. That's one terabyte of OneDrive space, not SharePoint space. Now, SharePoint um, typically... Um, the way SharePoint storage space is calculated is based on the amount of users that you have. But most organizations, which are say up to the 300 employees mark, you could expect to have more like maybe somewhere between one and three terabytes of storage space. Um, and that's for every single SharePoint site and every single Microsoft team that's storing documents combined all together. So you might have say 300 terabytes of OneDrive storage space if you had 300 licenses. Um, but you'd only have maybe, say, three terabytes of SharePoint storage space. And that, as I say, it's for all SharePoint sites combined. And again, I often get asked the question, oh, can we move the OneDrive storage space to SharePoint? No, it's fixed. You can't move it. You can't move it between employees. Everyone just has one terabyte of OneDrive storage space, and it's nothing to do with the SharePoint storage space. So people get a bit confused and stuck with that. So I thought I'd explain that. You've got 10 uh, plus additional apps for your business. So things like Microsoft Bookings, Planner, Forms. Um, th this covers all the kind of cool apps which comes with Microsoft 365, which is going to enable you to be a lot more productive. Um, you've got things like Microsoft Bookings, which allows you to take bookings from third parties and things like that. You've got Planner, which is like Trello, almost like an agile project management type of um, planning tool. Uh, forms, which is for creating small, lightweight forms, which can be used internally and externally if you wanted to use them for, say, feedback forms or questionnaires and things like that. Uh, automatic spam and malware filtering, so some great sort of um, security features which are built in um, to this license. Anytime phone and web support um, with Microsoft uh, and Microsoft 365 Copilot available as an add-on. So, again, 
don't get confused. Um, it's available as an add-on. You can add on Microsoft 365 Copilot to this license, but it is an add-on. So um, let's look at the next license, which is Microsoft 365 Business Standard. Now, um, some core differences. So then you've got desktop version of Word, Excel, PowerPoint, and Outlook. Now, if you're using SharePoint um, and you're using a lot of documents, document management, things like that, depending on your organization and what people are used to, but to be honest with you, 99% of the time, I find most organizations, the high percentage of their users want to use Word, Excel, PowerPoint in the desktop applications. Even though they're saving it into SharePoint and SharePoint is a document management area, most people do want to have the option for desktop uh, version. So I would check that first. Um, webinars with attended registration and reporting. This again is through Microsoft Teams. Collaborative workspaces to co-create using Microsoft Loop. So um, again, Loop's a fantastic kind of tool for collaborating, making notes, things like that. Video editing and design tools with Microsoft ClipChamp and Microsoft 365 Copilot available as an add-on. So the same uh, here. We can add that on top as well if we wanted to. Now, not massive differences when it comes to the kind of the, the abilities of SharePoint and what people are going to be doing other than, as I say, the desktop versions of the apps. Now, if you're looking for the cheapest cost and people are happy to use the web browser and the mobile apps, um, then you can obviously save 50% of the cost by using Microsoft 365 Business Basic rather than standard. Now, the big jump in this, not necessarily just in cost, but also in functionality, comes from when we look at Microsoft 365 Business Premium. Now, this allows us to have advanced identity and access management enhanced cyber threat protection against viruses and phishing atta attacks, enterprise-grade device and endpoint protection, discover, classify, and protective sensitive information, Microsoft 365 Copilot available as an add-on. Now, this is where I'm going to talk a little bit about how this affects SharePoint. So discover, classify, and protect sensitive information. This will give you way more control over your documents. Now, with both of these additional licenses, what's going to happen when you store documents in SharePoint? Yes, they're secure. Yes, you can control them. Yes, you can govern them with permissions and things like that. However, there's nothing really to stop a user from downloading documents out of SharePoint, putting them on a pen drive and taking them home with them. Um, whereas actually with this license, what you can do over and above with the documents which are stored in SharePoint is you can classify them. You can use um, what they call sensitivity labels. So say, for example, in that scenario, let's pretend we've got a salesperson who's working in our organization and they hand in their notice and they're leaving on Friday. What's to stop you if you've got an Excel document of all your customer uh, data, contact information, things like that stored inside of SharePoint, um, what's to stop them from downloading that and taking that home and then on Monday when they get a new job, opening that up and using that, that same Excel spreadsheet. Now with these two other options, um, you don't really have a huge amount of control over that. The, there's, there's plenty of ways around that people can siphon off information. Whereas with this license, we can apply sensitivity labels. So what we can do is we can have a label that's called, say, internal only, apply that to all of our documents, or at least the sensitive documents, and then say in that scenario, that salesperson, we've applied an internal only label to that particular SharePoint document. And then what happens is they download that document, take it home, they leave the organization, so we block their Microsoft 365 account. Now, the document is, is encrypted at the document level using that le uh, that label. So if they ever try and open it again, even if they took it home on a pen drive and put it ho at home on their own computer or a new works computer, it'll come up and say, sorry, you don't work here anymore, and it can automatically delete itself or just uh, basically doesn't let them into the document at all. So they do not have access to that information. That's the most best way you can protect yourself. You're also getting access to things like Intune, Microsoft Entry ID. So this is where we can start doing way more advanced things by locking things down based on IP addresses, um, places in the world. Um, so say, for example, you're a business that only works in the UK and you never expect that anyone would ever be logging in from any other country to access your documents um, anywhere in the world. You could use Intune um, policies um, to basically ensure that nobody's accessing any of the sort of documents, devices, things like that via um, 
an external country. This basically is like a setting up like risky um, countries and things like that, which you don't want um, potential hackers getting access to your documents. There's just no way you can access it from any other country other than the UK. Before I continue with this video, I just wanted to ask a quick favor. If you're enjoying this video or any other videos I've previously made, please do subscribe to my channel. It really does help me. Um, there's plenty of free content on my YouTube channel, which talks all about SharePoint and other Microsoft 365 uh, products. If you need any professional help uh, and services with SharePoint, there's a link in the bio area of my um, YouTube channel. You can get in contact with me via that link. But with that license that we're talking about before, Microsoft 365 Business Premium, there's loads of other great, fantastic apps that you're getting along with this. Basically, it's the most secure option you've got. You've got Microsoft Purview, uh, which essentially gives you a lot more control over the compliance, doing sort of audits and deep dives into things. We could set um, retention policies on documents and apply that um, broadly across all of our documents. So say, for example, um, staying on top of cleaning up our documents we can make sure that documents only um, are kept for a certain period of time or even ensuring that they don't get deleted for a certain point of time. Say, for example, like financial information, we might want to apply a retention label to those documents to say, do not allow them to be deleted for seven years. And at the end of that seven year cycle, go through a review process or even purge them off um, automatically or after a review process to make sure that things are kept up to date and you're fully compliant with GDPR. The final thing, I'm not even going to touch on this, is the Microsoft 365 Apps for Business. Um, this literally just includes desktop versions of Word, Excel, PowerPoint, and Outlook. It doesn't include SharePoint uh, or anything like that. This is just for real basic kind of use um, where you're using Word, Excel, PowerPoint, Outlook, and OneDrive. Um, it includes one terabyte of cloud storage space, but as I say, that is just purely OneDrive. It's not SharePoint. Um, and it does have the option for plugging in Copilot as well, but there's no SharePoint included in that. It's worth drilling down a little bit further into some of this information afterwards, just to have a little look at the licenses. Once you kind of determine which license it is that you're interested in, you can go and look, say, for example, under the file uh, storage sharing, and then look at what's actually included. So you can look at these, see what's kind of ticked and what's not. Um, what else would be relevant? Teamwork and communication. Again, just looking at what's included um, and helping sort of drill down into the, those different kind of areas um, of information. If you wanted to find out a bit more about the different kind of products, you can click on them um, and that will then take you um, to, to look at a little bit more information about that particular product as well that's included inside of that license.